Hi, I'm Derek Briggs, Product Manager for Sagami Rim Sales. Today, I'm going to show you how to properly touch off an OD turning tool on the subspindle side of your Sagami Swiss machine. Touch off a turning tool on the back working block on your Sagami B0326 Mark III. You're going to want to face it in whatever direction you'd like. You can do a right hand or a left handed tool. This happens to be a right handed tool, so it's facing up and towards the home position of the subspindle in X. So I always tend to use it this direction. If you wanted to get a left handed, it would be upside down this direction. I think it's a lot better this way because I'm not blocking, potentially blocking the position next to it. I'm staying away from everything over there, so it's uh, a lot of clearance and everything else. I can also turn for a longer distance if I needed to. So I tend to use a right handed tool facing up on the subspindle side. So that's gonna determine how we measure our X axis here in a minute. So I have a part picked off in my subspindle. I went up, picked off, this would be my part. I'm using a gauge pin for filming purposes, but this would typically be your part after you ran the main side and picked it off. So this should be our, our Z0 face of our part. We got our tool in, we got it cr clamped down, and we're ready to touch it off. Step number one, that's gonna be tool number 35. So I'm gonna go to MDI on the back side, make sure you're on the correct side. T3500, end of block, insert. So that's tool 35, no offset. I'm gonna hit cycle start. That's gonna bring my Y axis. So Y axis and X axis is gonna to come to center line of this particular pocket. So I'm actually on center. You can see my tool tip is obviously way off center but we're gonna correct that when we touch it off in X. So for now, I'm gonna handle my Z2, and I'm right now my multiplier is all the way up. I'm gonna carefully handle Z2 in the negative direction and get fairly close to the tip of my tool. Now I'm gonna handle my X2. Now, always remember, X2 on a, a positive direction is on any Sagami, is, X2 is always gonna be towards the tools. So. If my X2 home is over here in line with the main spindle and I, and I tell it to move in the positive direction, it's always going to move towards my tool block. So positive is always towards me. On say an SS26 machine where the back working block is in the back of the machine, X2 positive is the other direction, it's going to go away from me. So always keep that in mind when you're touching off the X axis on the subspindle side. So I'm going to move my X2. In the negative direction, I'm going back towards home position until I get my part in front of the tip of my tool. Now I can touch off my Z axis. Go back to Z. I'm gonna go to 100, that's 1,000 per click. And I'm gonna handle, and I'm also gonna be holding this piece of paper, just a normal piece of paper out of a notebook. And I'm gonna handle my Z2 forward. At the same time, I'm gonna be moving this piece of paper and all I'm waiting for is for the part to catch the piece of paper and hold it against the tool. The piece of paper is being held by itself. That's gonna be my Z0 measurement. Now, if you wanted to get real technical, you could call that Z positive 0 0.003 because my paper is about three thousandths wide. That's completely up to you. I tend to just say Z0 measure. So, I go to my offset screen, make sure I'm in geometry. You always want the touch off, the initial touch off to be in geometry. So I'm gonna page down and I'm on tool number 35. I'm touching off my Z axis. I'm gonna say Z, zero, and then the measure function. It's gonna give me a, a nice big number that's gonna be the distance from Z to zero to the tip of my tool. That's where I am. So. Like I said, always touch off the tool and do your measurement and put your big numbers in geometry. Once you run a part and you wanna take a measurement on your part and, and do that fine tuning and dial it in and get it right on the specifications of your print, then you use wear and do those fine adjustments. But when you initially touch off, make sure you're in geometry, you can see a G here to know that you're in geometry and also at the top, it will also say geometry. So I touched off my Z. I can now slowly handle Z2 in the positive direction while I hold my piece of paper here until I can pull it free. 
And I'm just gonna handle off a little bit because I have to now touch off X. So I'm gonna touch off the diameter of my part, which happens to be a 12 millimeter gauge pin. That's 472.4 is 12 millimeters. So I'm gonna handle my X2 negative and get in front of my tool. I'm just gonna be a little bit to this side. I'm gonna handle my Z2 in. And now I'm gonna do the same procedure. I'm gonna handle my X2 in the positive direction while I hold this piece of paper. So I'm bringing it back. All right, I'm touching it. So now I had to move my subspindle from center line in the negative direction to get my part in front of the tool in X. So my measurement is gonna be in the negative direction. So I'll go to 35 in X, and I know that pin diameter is 472. That's 12 millimeters, so X minus 0.472, X minus, very important. If your boring bar was flipped over the other way and your tool tip was on this side, then you would be moving in the positive direction and you would be touching off X just X.472, not X minus 0.472. Can't stress that enough. X minus 0.472 measure. That's gonna give me minus 1.329, okay? If you divide that number by two, that's gonna be the distance from center of this pocket to the tool tip over here. Center of the pocket to the tool tip is this number divided by two. So now I'm gonna handle my X2 in the negative direction. I'm gonna push it away from me to get the paper out. I come off. Now I can handle my Z2. I'm gonna go fast because I know I'm clear of everything. And I'm gonna handle all the way back. I'm gonna reset my alarm for over travel. And now my turning tool is touched off in X and Z to the tip of my part and the OD of my part. We're all set to cut apart with that tool.